So I want to drop some knowledge on you folks today about relationships, specifically toxic relationships. Have you ever prayed for someone who walked out of your life or you've, you thought you lost? You pray for that person, you want them back. But everybody around you is telling you that that person is no good for you, that you can do better, that you're worth more, that you have more value. You ever notice that? But yet you're praying to have this person back in your life. You want to have a relationship. You want that person to come back because you feel in your mind that they are going to heal your pain, that your pain will go completely away if you can just have that person back in your life. But in reality, deep down inside, you know that that person isn't right for you. That person isn't good for you. But yet you want them back in your life. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you the reason why you want to have a relationship with that person and bring that person back in your life or you want wanting God to, for that person to come in your life. The reason is, is because of comfort. The reason is because of fear. See, those are the two biggest reasons, comfort and fear. Let's talk about comfort first. See, you, you feel comfortable around this person because you know this person, even though they may not be good for you, even though they may t be toxic to you, even though it may be an unhealthy relationship, you feel comfortable around them because that's what you know. That's what you're used to. Because people fear change. You know, you may be with a person who has chipped away and chipped away at your self-esteem, chipped away at your, uh, your, your, positivi your positivity, you know, constantly being negative, constantly belittling you. But yet, you want to be around this person. Because that's what you believe. You believe that you're that person, but you're really not that person. And the reason you stay is because of comfort. The other reason you stay is because of fear. Because you're afraid that if you leave this person, if you move on to someone else, or you simply move on, that... See, you're equating love. Check this out. You're equating love and acceptance with that behavior that that person was showing and displaying towards you. In your mind, you've, you've become accustomed to or you've fooled yourself to believing and thinking that that is true love. Now, <clears throat> take it from somebody who was in a situation like that, who is now looking at it from the outside and who's able to say to you that that is not love. Love is kind, love is patient. You know the verse in 1 Corinthians. If you want to know what love is, go into 1 Corinthians because it will tell you what true love is. True love is not jealous. True love doesn't hate, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't harm. <clears throat> um, it doesn't despise, it doesn't belittle, it doesn't abuse physically, emotionally, or mentally. Okay? You become accustomed to that and you begin to believe that that is love and that that's, you know, love for you and your in your mind. That's what you begin to believe and you begin to think. So therefore, you become afraid to leave that situation because in your mind, your belief is that even though you know it's unhealthy deep down inside, you know this subconsciously, right? However, because you're comfortable in that situation, you would rather stay. Now what happens is eventually, in psychology they call that codependency also, where you have two people, like this is a relationship, right? You have the man and the woman, right? One individual, another individual. What happens in codependent relationships is you have these two people, right? They get together and then all of a sudden there's control, there's anger, there's frustration, there's abuse, there's mental abuse, there's the belittling, um, there's physical abuse, whatever type of different abuses they are. And all of a sudden, you now become so codependent on one another. And look up the term codependency and what it means because you may be in a codependent relationship right now. But you become so codependent that you now become, you come like this. You Now, there is no longer two different identities, but one. And that's very unhealthy. Now, when you separate from that person, it's, it's, it's like this, look, right? So you're so together that when you separate, it's like pulling apart, it's like pulling skin off of an apple or off of a banana, right? It hurts, it's hard to pull off, and it's painful, right? Because you're so codependent on that person. God doesn't want that for anyone. For you to, first of all, God wants you to put him first. He should be the center, or actually he should be the top. 
he should be the head of the household, so to speak, or he's at the top of that, that triangle. And then, of course, it's the man and the wife and then the children. But what happens is people become so intertwined to the point where they're so codependent on one another that they feel like they can't live without one another. And that is not healthy. If you're in a relationship like that with someone who's abusing you, if you're in a relationship with someone who's physically, mentally, verbally, emotionally abusing you, that's not a good relationship. If you're in a relationship where you're being controlled, now what does it mean to be controlled? You have to ask permission to go somewhere. You have to ask permission to do something. Uh, um, everything you do, you either have to ask permission or you have to, you always wind up finding that you're explaining yourself to this person. That is not healthy. Um, maybe when you're around this person, you feel like you can't be yourself, you're walking on eggshells. That's not a health, healthy relationship. Now, for those of you out there that are married, my, my advice to you is simply this. Go to counseling. Get some sort, of account, some sort of counseling for your relationship to see if that's something you can fix. It can, either it's going to get fixed or it's not. You know, if God is involved, I believe that God will change our hearts because the Bible says he can do that, and he will. Um, but it also takes two people, two committed people that are willing to work together to come out of that unhealthy situation. I'm not saying that people can't change but it's almost impossible for some to change. So, you know, walking out of a situation, coming out of a situation like that, from my own personal experience, I can tell you it's very hard and difficult. And not just for me, but for the other person as well. It's hard for both people when they come out of an unhealthy relationship. But once you come out of that, once you're away for enough time and you begin to see reality, you'll start to see and understand that everything that other people around you were saying is 100% true and accurate. And you yourself will start to understand and, and, and see that it was the best thing that ever happened. So unhealthy relationships are completely unhealthy for you. They, they create havoc on your mind. They create havoc on your body. They create... Um, you know, havoc on your spirituality, your, your relationship with God. You know, God doesn't want us being in these unhealthy relationships because anything that's, you know, going to pull you backwards or pull you down isn't of God. It isn't good. God wants us to flourish in our relationships. He wants us to move forward in our relationships. He wants us to progress in our relationships. So I want you to think about this because either you yourself have been in a similar relationship or you know someone that's in a relationship right now who just, you know, they refuse to see the signs or they just have all this fear around them because they don't want to detach themselves from that other person. But it's the best thing you can do. If you tried everything, if you tried talking to this person, if you went to therapy, I mean, you tried everything under the sun and it just doesn't work, then perhaps it's time for you to move on and go. Who wants to think about it? Who wants to be in a relationship where you have to constantly explain yourself, you're, you're always walking on eggshells, you don't feel like you can be yourself. That's not healthy you find yourself asking permission that's a problem so you know there's just so many different signs i advise you to look up um you can go online and you can look up toxic relationships it'll tell you all the signs and what it's all about so I did, it's just a quick thing that was on my mind i haven't made a video about this in a long time and i've i've you know uh i felt it in my heart today to make this video about toxic relationships so listen if the video has helped you please share this video Send me a friend request where you can follow me. If this video is on uh, 